first day of my life This is the first day of my life Think I was blind before I met you And I think that I was blind This is the first day of my life This is the first day of my life I realized that I need you And I wondered if I could come home That I had to write a poem Okay <clears throat> Part one we made shadow puppets that night. Nothing but hands and flashlights for entertainment after power went out in the cabina. And our laughter led to awkward, led to fumblings, led to sex. Two city kids toughing it out amidst the mountains and who knew so many stars existed. It was the first time, the first time in so long that the weight of a body didn't crack me from within, but felt light and fun in the curves of limbs that even the Burgas wanted some and kicked us out of bed until new sheets came out and a can of Raid sputtered empty. We continued as if it had all been a natural pause. Part two. To the day, 10 years forward, confident I still live where last you left, I find a letter from you, reading, I saw you in the street two weeks ago, but my birthday exactly. You moved too quick to be stopped and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to. Maybe, maybe we will see each other again soon. All the best. And I'm surprised. Who knew you could still drive me to silence? Three. It is fate. It is fate working again. How else to explain another run-in, another rediscovery? You still have that same side job at that same side street bookstore, the one I walk to every now and again, long after we parted ways, just to see if you were there and you never were. And how now, how now you stop me and joke of speedy steps and focused looks, and you tell me how you looked but you lost track of me. And I admit, it touches me. Who knew you still cared? I sat by the river afterwards for 86 minutes. I sat by the river and I sang bars of melodies, told myself not to dream. Not to dream, not right now. Stay here, looking out. Look out at the factory smoke and glass shards and notice a simple, single, purple kite flying. And so it goes. We connect, we separate, we connect, we be on our ways, and maybe language will bring us together again. But stay here, looking out. And remember, sometimes love is not enough, even when we find old ones or the old ones find us. Uh, yeah, that one. Uh -huh. and, and this older uh, person, you know, just this older woman, looked down at me and said, oh, hi, son, oh, you're, you're Mr. Wing's son. Do you want to be a mailman someday? And I said, like, thinking my father would be so proud of me, I said, yeah, when I grow up, I want to be a mailman, just like my daddy. And he looked down at me with fire in his eyes and said, no, you will never be a mailman. I thought you'd be happy, right? Um, also, when I was a child, I don't know, you all probably too young to remember this. There's a cartoon called Bumpet Babies. Cool. Uh, and baby Kermit, on one episode, became a taxi driver. And he took all the other Muppet babies in his magic taxi and took them to the moon, and underwater, and to New York City, and all over the world. And when my dad came home, I said to him proudly, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be a taxi driver. <laughs> no! You will never be a taxi driver!
This first poem is called, uh, it's about a night of poetry at the New Yorican Poets Cafe. One night at the New Yorican, I opened the bathroom door to see a poet whose work I didn't like, standing bare-assed, ass-side facing me, while her left hand was moving downward mid-wipe. Now I know there are people who hide out in porta potties to see this sort of thing, and I know that singer Gigi Allen, who overdosed across the street from my apartment in New York one night, had a strange appreciation for fecal matter. And although I'm certainly weird, I'm not that weird. And the reality is that no one looks good bent over the toilet and wiping. And I have no idea why her ass was facing away from the toilet while she wiped. I, and I can't say that I'm at all curious about this. And if somehow you knew why and were to tell me, I probably wouldn't believe you anyway, and my opinion of you would diminish so swiftly you'd swear I just smacked you in the face. <laughs> I'd seen some horrible things in my New York days, and her jazz poetry and her in-the-moment performances were two of them. But the only thing I can say I wished I'd never experienced was the sight of her wiping her ass. <laughs> Maybe if I'd liked her work, my reaction would have been different. Maybe I would have remembered a line from one of her poems. Maybe I would have gone right home, picked up one of her books, and just read madly and uncontrollably for the rest of the night. Maybe I would have jumped up, raised my arms in celebration, and declared, I've seen Judy Woolworth wiping her ass, or I have been blessed, or is there no one here to challenge me? Judy Woolworth, of course, was not this poet's real name. I do not and have never had any of her books. I don't remember if she used my name when she turned toward the open bathroom door and said, sorry, Jose, I'll be out in a minute, or just, sorry, I'll be out in a minute, without any name, which would mean, perhaps, that she didn't know it was me. And maybe, for that matter, she didn't like my work. I never told her her readings made me cringe. We never spoke about these things. I never asked her, did you know it was me who saw you wiping your ass the New Yorker the other night? <laughs> Those were the days when New York was taller and the rest of the world seemed farther away. And a few days after I saw Judy Woolworth's ass was when I spent a quiet night at home while Gigi Allen, whose shows I never saw and never wanted to see, deep fried his fucked up ass so close to where I was that I probably heard the same sounds he did, the car alarms, the drunks arguing on the corner before everything went blank. This is a realm where all can be forgiven. You can exist within and outside of the context of which you speak, or to whom you're even speaking. From, From here, here, I am otherworldly. The conscious paparazzi committed to an illusion of creating art, and so I start by putting my arms out like this. Because my arms are faders, and with the most minuscule of gestures, I can make the most insignificant thing seem profound, like receiving one dollar as a tax refund. And just as you begin to wonder where this is going... I position myself in such a manner, setting you up for the highly anticipated and overly dramatic pause. <laughs> because I've already forgotten the next line. And then suddenly it comes to me. In a roar of alliteration, damn this dollar-driven democracy demanding disproportionate dividends from the d downtrodden and destitute. You are destroying any disenfranchised dreams I've ever had. Because it's always good to talk about things you don't like. Like the Friday song. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Overpriced fine dining meals that look like they're part of the Atkins menu. When people still talk like they're on Facebook, I mean, really? No. TMI, LOL, equal sign parentheses. <laughs> Things like skinny jeans and, and my personal favorite. Among the fast spoken word references to legitimize your poem has to hate Starbucks. Starbucks but it's okay to go there to secretly write your poems. Then your poem has to get deep. Deep? Like the unknown medicinal qualities of pho that cure hangovers. <laughs> deep like the plot line to Jersey Shore. Deep like tarot cards and mood rings. Deep like understanding the plight of underserved and underdeveloped impoverished, impoverished communities undergoing a cultural upheaval because they're stuck th listening to things like the Gucci Man and suggestive psychoerotic songs like Making Love in a Club further impairing our next generation's understanding of what it means to be in a relationship. Do you like Yu-Gi-Oh cards? <laughs> <laughs>
And once you find the Achilles heel of your audience, you have to exploit it with every chance you get with cliches it's from the past. Bad. Racism. Bigotry. Revolutions in other countries. Outside the one you fail to start, start here. here. Because it's okay for us to call you out. Because this is art, a social commentary, third person observation, a reflection, a personal narrative. This is fiction. But it doesn't end here. Because there has to be a moral. Some sort of thing that we can learn from. Because what's, if there is no empathy, what was the point of bringing you, you into, into this conversation? conversation? I don't want to be speaking for the sake of speaking. I want to be heard. I want to be embarrassed, naked in front of a crowd. Retort. I feel vulnerable, unashamed, and proud. With nothing but, but my words. words. But you see, these words have to make you smile, laugh, cry. And, and I, I don't, don't know, know if I'm, I'm there, there yet. yet. Because all I have are words. words. With this song, we are SNRG. My name is Ice Speed. This is the last one. This is the type of song that you want to. Hey, this is the first day of my life. <laughs>